So you think you know how to count. Are you up for counting all the possible ways there are for winning the lottery? Go on, I'll wait. Computing often relies on figuring out the number of possible ways that something can be done. It helps us structure our code. It actually gives us a little bit of an idea about performance, to predict performance. It also might give us a chance to understand the probability that an error might occur or that some sort of a situation might occur. So it's really important to understand counting. Now, before we start with this idea of coming up with the total number of ways of doing something, we're going to start out with the simplest principle. It's called the multiplication principle of counting. And it's actually quite simple. The idea is that if I have a number of decisions to make, let's say I have three decisions to make, and decision one has A options, and decision two has B options, and decision three has C options, then the total number of ways that we can possibly have, or the total number of possible outcomes, is A times B times C. Oftentimes, this is described with a tree of some sort. So we have this starting point. And let's say that the first decision has three options, all right? Now, once we've made that, three, that first decision, we're at one of three possible outcomes. Let's say that the second decision, there are two options. So from each one of these three possible outcomes, there are two additional outcomes. Once we've made that decision, let's say we have a third decision, and there are also two options for that possible position. And you get one, let's see, out of all the possible outcomes after our two decisions, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 possible outcomes after going through these stages. Three times two times two, that just so happens to equal 12. Now, we use this type of a principle, we use this principle for all sorts of things. But let's start out with a pretty simple one. Now to show how this multiplication principle of counting works, let's talk about license plates. Let's say that you have a license plate, your state has a license plate that has, oh, I don't know, a format where you have a letter followed by four numbers followed by a letter. Now, how many possible license plates can we come up with? For example, how many cars do we expect to have to register over the next number of years that will require individual license plates? Will we have enough? The, 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 each one of these digits is based on a, 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 an alphabet, right? We talked about alphabets before, or these sets. And so the alphabet or the set on which this first digit and this last digit are based is the Latin alphabet. Specifically, the capital letters from this alphabet. And in fact, it might even be reduced a bit more. For example, the O, the letter O looks like the number zero, and the letter I could be mistaken for the number one. So actually, what we might be looking at is the capital letters minus O and minus I. So there are 24 options. You know, we've got 26 letters in the Latin alphabet, minus O and I give us 24. So this first and last uh, letter have 24 possible combinations. And then for each one of these numeric decimal digits, we can have zero through nine, right? So there's 10 for each one of these positions. And so the total number of possible license plates we can come up with is 24 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 24. And that is going to give us, well, 24 times 24 is 576 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10,000, so you get 5,760,000 5, different combinations. You know, perhaps that's enough. If not, how could we increase the total number we've got? Well, one of the ways we could increase it is to change, for example, the second digit from being a number to being a letter. And so having two letters, three numbers in the letter, then that will give us 24 times 24 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 24, increasing it again. 
Now there are a couple of ways that we can create these sequences or subsets from these sets of characters that we're drawing from, you know, the Latin alphabet or numbers. Hey, we could even have playing cards or binary digits or any, any Scrabble letters, any number of things. Now the type of of classifications for these sequences or subsets, and there is a difference, we'll talk about that in a second. They're classified in two different ways. First of all, we have order matters and any order. Now, how are we gonna distinguish this? Well, license plates, the order in which those characters and numbers occur matters. If you rearrange the numbers, rearrange the uh, characters, you're going to get a very different license plate, right? So license plates, orders ma order matters. But let's talk about cards. Let's talk about dealing a uh, regular hand of cards. Well, whenever you receive cards, the order in which you receive those cards doesn't dictate the type of hand that you're holding. You can rearrange them either in ascending order, by suit, descending order, however you want to order them. So that might be in any order. Now, that's one classification. The other classification would be duplicates allowed or no duplicates allowed. Now, each one of these sections has a name. For example, the order matters and duplicates allowed. That could be called exponentiation. Or it could be called permutations with repetition. Now, as far, and, and that allows duplicates, but if we take away the ability to have dupl duplicates, that's just simply, we're gonna call that permutations. Now, in this column where any order is allowed and duplicates are allowed, that will typically be referred to as combinations with repetition. And take away the ability for duplicates, then you just simply have combinations, right? Now let's talk about some examples for each one of these. Uh, for exponentiation or permutations with repetition. Uh, the license plate, that's a good example. Other things might be a student ID. Um, so, you know, you may have a student ID, some sort of a number 0012559. Well, that order, you know, if we rearrange those numbers, it's a different student, but duplicates are allowed because we're basically counting up, right? Uh, software keys, anything that you use to register software, a safe combination, those would all be classified as exponentiation or permutations with repeti repetition. Now, let's take away, let's take away the ability to have duplicates and we just simply have permutations. Um, some of you may have seen one of these mechanical key pads where there are some buttons there and you press a button and once the button's pressed you can't press that one again you have to move on to another button in that case you could not have repeti repetitions but order matters because if i have one two three and that's my combination three two one shouldn't be able to work or two three one shouldn't be able to work even though it is the same set of characters now let's talk about any order duplicates allowed now that one may be a little bit harder to come up with a an example maybe i've got a shish kebab that allows me to put 10 vegetables vegetables on it. And I've got a bowl, a big bowl of mushrooms, tomatoes, and zucchini. Now the bowls are big enough, so I'm not going to run out of any one of them. If I do that, then I've got, maybe I can put five mushrooms and two tomatoes and three zucchini. Now when I pull them off after they're cooked, when I pull them off and they hit the plate, the order doesn't matter, right? I could have put them on, you know, one tomato, then one zucchini, one tomato, one zucchini, uh, five mushrooms and a zucchini. Doesn't matter. That order does not matter. And because whenever I pull them off the shish kebab, it's still the same pile of vegetables, right? So that would be something like a combination with duplicates allowed. Combinations with no duplicates allowed, well, we already talked about the hand of cards, right? Whenever I've got a deck of 52 cards, if I pull those cards off, the order in which they're dealt to me doesn't matter. I can shuffle them around so that they're in, you know, by suit or, or, or number and so forth. Uh, lotto numbers. We don't get repeats with lotto numbers. And because 
because the whenever they're presented to you, they're always presented in order, that's not necessarily the order in which they appeared whenever the lotto selection machine selected those numbers. You can sort those numbers around. It is still the same lotto number, uh, the lotto numbers. Bingo. You know, the, the fact that I got a bingo in a specific row on my bingo card, that's not necessarily the order in which they came up with. The order is not defined. Let's talk about something that's not as, as clear cut. Uh, if you play Scrabble, if you're familiar with Scrabble, the letters, there's a limited number of letters. For example, I don't know how many Q's there are, but maybe there's only two Q's in the letters for a Scrabble game or five E's. I don't know what the total number is. So eventually you're going to run out. And so you actually have to use a combination of things in order to address something where the, the source, the resource in which I pull from has duplicates, but it's a limited number of duplicates. We'll talk about that whenever we get to a later lesson. In later videos, we are going to come up with the methods, the expressions that allow us to calculate or count the exact number of ways that we can organize these things. But I'm going to actually give you another example now with something pretty simple. Let's say I have a set A, B, and C, all right? So N is equal to 3. And let's say that I want to order those in a, in, a, in a sequence of three. So R is also equal to three. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting three from a set of three. And this may seem like a weird way to start things out, but hopefully it'll give us an idea of the number of ways that we can organize things. Now, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this table and I'm gonna say, okay, there are a bunch of different ways that I could create these combinations. And we're really starting out with the multiplication principle. It can also be called exponentiation. And so I could have three A's, no B's, and no C's, right? I could also have no A's, but three B's and no C's. I could also have no A's or B's, but three C's. So there's, there's some ways that I could do this. I could have two A's, one B, no C, two A's, no B's, one C. I could have two B's with one A, no C. I could have two B's with no A's and one C. This is getting a little bit long, isn't it? Hopefully I'm coming up with every possible combination. Um, I could also, let's see, I could also have two C's with one A, no B's. I could have two C's with no A's and one B. All right. And last of all, I could also have one out of each. And how can I, or, you know, can I enumerate all of these? Well, Three A's, that's just three A's, right? Three B's, that's just three B's. Here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you every way we can organize these or sort these. And then I could also have three C's, right? Now when it comes to two A's and a B, I could have the B last, so I could have A, A, B. I could have the B in the middle, A, B, A, or I could have the B at the front, A, B, excuse me, B, A, A. And so those are all the ways that I could organize that. Similarly, for two A's and a C, I could have AAC, ACA, or CAA. Now, I could do the same thing for the B's, right? Two B's and an A, the A could come at the end, it can come in the middle, or it can come at the beginning. And then two, two B's and a C, that would be BBC, uh, BCB, or CBB. And then lastly, whenever I have two C's, I can have two C's and an A, C-A-C, A-C-C, or I could have C-C-B, C-B-C, or B-C-C. And then last of all, I could have all three, one of each of them. Well, I could have them A-B-C, right? And then I could swap B and C and get A-C-B. I could also put A in the middle and get B, A, C, or swap B and C and get C, A, B. And then lastly, what am I missing? How about B, C, A, and C, B, A? I think that is all of them, right? Now, <laughs> wow! 
there are a couple of things that I want to show here. First of all, remember the multiplication principle, the exponentiation. Now, the exponentiation says that I can have three decisions. I can pick A, B, or C for the first position, then A, B, or C for the second position, and then A, B, or C for the third position. That gives us a total of 3 times 3 times 3, or 27 options. And what I've got here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. There's all the options. But whenever we start uh, restricting ourselves to order, or to duplicates, we start reducing that. For example, let's say that order matters, but and no duplicates are allowed. So all of these top rows here have at least one set of duplicates. We have three A's, three B's, three C's, and then two A's, two B's, or two C's, and all those rows. The only option we have whenever it comes to no duplicates allowed is this bottom row here. Now, if order matters, that means that this sequence is not equal to this sequence, how many options do we have? Well, if order matters, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different options. So we have duplicates not allowed, order matters, it's just these bottom six combinations that we can come up with. Now, what if we then add the idea of order doesn't matter, any order, but duplicates are allowed. Now that opens us back up here, but in the end what we have is if order doesn't matter, then each one of these enumerations on each one of these rows suddenly just gets shrunk down to just one. For example, if order doesn't matter, if any order, AAB is the same thing as ABA, and so we don't have to worry about those last two. And so for each one of these rows, we can only have one submission, so to speak. And so we have, if any order and duplicates are allowed, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ways to do that. Then if we go to this idea of any order but no duplicates, remember no dupl duplicates say that these top nine rows are gone, all we've got is this bottom row, but now order also doesn't matter, so ABC is the same thing as ACB, remember sets, order doesn't matter, then we are actually limited to just one option or one combination. Now what if we change our set to A, B, C, D, and now N is equal to 4, but we are still only going to pick 3 from it. I'm not going to draw this one up on the board. First one was too tedious. But what we've got are four options, right? We've got our four options, and this gives us all the possible ways that we could pick, you know, four, excuse me, three from A, or three from B, or three from C, or three from D, or two from A, and then pick one. And there's all the possible combinations, along with all the possible sorting orders for each one of those rows. Now, if order matters and duplicates are allowed, we go back to exponentiation, right? Exponentiation says it'll be, uh, so I've got four, and so we've got uh, four options, and we pick it three times, so it's four to the third. Four times four is 16, times four is 64. So if you count through all of these possible orders, you see that we have 64 different options there. But as soon as we say that duplicates are not allowed, then we're gonna focus only on these rows where there's one each of A or B or C or D. So we have three A, and we have A or B, excuse me, we have one A, one B, one C, or one A, one B, one D, or one B, one A, one C, one D, or one uh, B, one C, and one D. And that gives us, now, once again, order matters. So each one of those, for example, ABC doesn't is not the same sequence as ACB. And now what we've got are 24 different combinations. But if we, and that's by the way, called permutations. Remember, that's permutations. Now, the last two are actually called combinations, whenever you take out any order. And I should have written that on the board before, but that's combinations. And remember, combinations is not the one that's used with a combination lock. Permutations are used with a combination lock. Wish they had gotten that straight early on. Anyway, now what we're saying is duplicates are allowed, 
and order doesn't matter. So as soon as you say order doesn't matter, you take out all those different orderings that were in each one of the rows and you only have one option for each one of those rows. And in the end, what we've got is for an N of four and an R of three is we have 20 combinations. Lastly, if we have any order but no duplicates are allowed, then we can only take the rows where there's one of each. Taking the rows where there's one of each, then say, we don't get any order out of these. All we're saying is we're going to just pick one item. We're actually reduced down to four combinations. Now, we could come up with figuring out the list. We could come up with, like we did in this particular video, I could list every possible way, but a lot of the times that's not possible. And even worse, a lot of the times whenever we do our list, we're going to miss some. So we need to have formulas that identify how many possible values we can have for, you know, a set of n with choosing r and are duplicates allowed or not allowed? And does order matter or does order not matter? In the next two videos, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with all the different expressions that are used in order to calculate those numbers.